Hello, welcome back to the channel. Now I've just finished painting that, which turned out quite nicely, nice and stormy. So watch me paint it here and talk my usual random nonsense. Without further ado, let's do some painting. Hello, welcome to my latest video. Hope you're keeping well and all that jazz. Now I'm going to be painting on this old painting that I did a couple of years ago. No, a couple of years ago, a year and a half ago. Can't really remember. Um, I've sanded it down. Um, it was all right at the time when I painted it, but as my work has evolved, um, it's looking quite tired. So I thought I'd, I'd go over it. Sand it down, get rid of some of the impasto, and uh, size wise, it looks to be 20 by 16 inches. Just check with my grandad yardstick, yeah, 20 by 16. So we will start going. I'm going to get my pilot camera switched on, and I will see you in just a second. Right then, pilot cam is on, hopefully. Just grab a suitable pointer. Um, I was going to say, uh, oh yeah, you know what I'm missing? A um, bit of titanium light. My mind went blank then, I think there's something wrong with this picture. Just plonk a good uh, lump of that on. So anyway, I've got the glass palette, I've got some Indian yellow, I've got burnt umber, I've got ultramarine blue, titanium white of course, and I've got a sort of sky colour on the go as well, mixing ultramarine blue and titanium white together. Pretty much the same, well it is the same colours that I've been using for the past couple of weeks or so because I'm liking mixing my own colours at the moment. So I'm just going to grab some of that Indian yellow and a bit of that ultramarine blue just to make a nice greeny colour. Let's give my brush a quick wipe. Bear with me. And I'm just going to grab some of that titanium white, just put some more in that sky colour. I've just added a bit of uh, green into that completely by accident, but it kind of adds to it. You get all sorts of colours in the sky. So there we are, that's that. Um, I'll also wipe my brush again. I'm just going to get some ultramarine blue and just plonk it in that uh, burnt umber, make a nice grey colour, hopefully. A bit more blue, perhaps. And a bit more. And there we go. So I'll give my brush another wipe. I'll just uh, add a bit of that titanium white to the grey colour to mix, make a nice whiter tone, and grab some of that green as well. And there we are. Job done. I do need in the middle, of course, a bit of zest it. If I can find where I put the damn thing. There it is. Plonk some of that in the middle. And off we go. So I'll get my face camera turned on and I will see you in just a second. Right then, I'm back in the room. I shall uh, get going to find my brushes. My two flat brushes. Got one for the darker tones. One for the lighter tones, so uh, that'll do nicely. Hopefully it prevents things getting too muddy like that. So um, we shall do. Going to get some of this. Oh, mind you, what I need to do first. need to wipe my brushes because I washed them. And I don't forget water on my canvas or in my oils because I'll have an oil slick. So I'll just give them a quick dry. And we shall get going. It's fascinating viewing, watching me drying paint brushes. Right, hopefully that'll do it. Right, let's do. So I'm going to get some of this green. Just start plunking on a bit more actually. Yeah, we'll be all keeping well and all that sort of stuff. It's been funny mixed weather. It's gone all hot and horrible again. And just about ready for autumn. 
Because I do like autumn. I'm not the biggest fan of summer in the world. Those of you who've watched my previous videos know, because I'm always moaning about it. A oh, little bit of green on. I'm going to have this horizon a bit lower than that. So I'm going to drop it down slightly, have a bit more sky on the go. Make the sky a bit more exciting than what I've got there. Brush a quick wipe. Yeah, it's, it's been really stormy and windy, which I like. I love storms and things. Particularly in the summer, I love it when it's uh, rainy in the summer and uh, stormy. It always reminds me of um, the Orkney Islands when I used to go up there. Um, it always seemed to be windy all the time, which I loved. I absolutely adored it up there. I'd love to go back one day when I'm rich and famous. I'd live there if I could, up in the Orkney's. I really would. But it's a magical place. And it's absolutely loaded with history. Right, I'm just going to uh, sort this kitchen roll out, which is a brand new roll. There we are. Quick wipe of the brush. I'm going to grab some titanium wire just to, uh, just to put it on the horizon a bit. But yeah, if you like me, you like your history, go up to the Orkneys. Might be a bit difficult if you're watching this video from, I don't know, Singapore or something like that. But, uh, you know, if you're ever in the British Isles, there's uh, plenty of places. Orkneys being one of them. Ah, right, bit of a horizon on the go. I'm going to uh, get some of this uh, blue that I mixed. Just from my fingers, a sky colour. Just plonk it on there. Yeah, up there, everywhere you look, it's just history, thousands of years. And it was um, up there, there was um, a major naval base at Scapa Flow up in the Orkneys, and uh, there's loads of shipwrecks. Because what I was during the First World War. And I'm just going off memory here, so bear with me. Not that I was there, but you know, it's what I've read. Um, the German Grand Fleet, you know, when the armistice was signed, they were all, um, they all surrendered and they were impounded, if you like, um, along with the crews of the ships. At Scapa Flow. And uh, one night, um, the, the German command decided to scupper the entire fleet. Uh, it's a vast amount of ships, and they were all scuppered. And, um, you know, the, the crew, you know, skeleton crews left on the uh, sank the ships but but got off you know got off the various ships and things um there were i think there was a couple of german sailors who were shot um because the the people you know the, the, the guards who were you know looking after the ships or you know the prisoners of war and what have you panicked a bit because I thought there was, you know, the whole fleet were going to uh, cause them problems. So I think a couple were shot. Which is uh, sad really, considering the, the war had ended and everything like that. Um, but anyway, the, all the ships were sank. And, you know, the, the signs of shipwrecks all over the island 
from First World War and Second World War. And one day I was walking along a beach. Um, I mean, one occasion there was a bloody sea mine on the beach, you know, classic sea mine with the spikes and everything like that. But that's, that's a different, different story. But <coughs> this occasion, walking on the beach, and um, I spied a, a round object, you know, embedded in the sand. So, oh, what's this? This is uh, interesting. So I, you know, dug around the sand and brought this thing out, and it was. Uh, I looked at it and thought, that is a porthole off a ship. And it was just a perfect circle. You know, there was no glass in it, just a hole. And it was rusty and full of, you know, limpets and various other crustaceans and barn fruit. But anyway, I thought, oh, this is a hell of a find. It's a piece of naval history. So I, I gathered this thing up, great big heavy thing, and um, put it in the car, the boot. I thought this would be great to take home and have on the mantelpiece, you know, get it cleaned up and what have you. So, um, you know, I put it in the car and took it home in the ferry and the 900 mile journey back to Derbyshire or whatever it was. Um, I'll just get my flat brush, put some scale. And um, I thought, oh, this is belting this and tell all sorts of people about it. But anyway, I, I took it home with me and it was on my mantelpiece for a while in the house. And yeah, I was telling everyone about this uh, um, porthole I'd found off a destroyer or whatever ship it was. And it was a, it was a hell of an object. But anyway, um, I, for some reason, ended up back in my car this porthole and um, I've probably been showing everyone and I was taking my car to the garage for an MOT or something like that and uh, I said to the mechanic who, who was my mate as well and I said oh look at this you know did the finger come and look at this what I found in the orties and I said, yeah, I found this uh, this porthole off a ship. Come and see. And opened up the boot. He took one glance at it. He said, that's not a porthole you'd have to bugger. That's um, um, a brake drum off a Land Rover or something like that. <laughs> so uh, I'd, I'd lugged this bloody porthole across Britain. And uh, just for him to announce that it was off a, a car. So I couldn't believe it. But anyway, so that that went in the nearest skip, I think. A waste of time, that was. I've been, I've been telling everyone about it. But I do like this grey colour on the sky. It's quite nice. Nice and stormy. That wasn't my only drama with uh, historical artefacts. Um, and I'll put some a bit more titanium white down here, maybe. Oh no, I'll, I'll carry on with the grey. Um, I was left in a a will, um, a Tudor painting, and I thought, "Look hell, amazing Tudor painting." And uh, I was quite gobsmacked. Now, the person was still alive and they, they bequeathed it to me, you know. And I, I, was, I was just amazed. I was absolutely touched. But I'd, I'd never seen this Tudor painting in my life. My mum had seen it. I hadn't, I hadn't seen it. So anyway, sadly, the lady passed away. And, you know, the time came for me to uh, collect this Tudor painting. And, um, you know, I went to pick it up and, you know, it was a decent sized thing. But I looked at it, I thought, hmm, it looks a bit odd to me. I, I was kind of expecting a Hans Holbein, you know, of, 
Anne or somebody. I thought, oh God, I'll be sat a fortune here. But anyway, you know, it, it was a nice thing anyway. And I thought, I'll take it to be valued because I, I live near an auction house with valuers and all that. So I thought, oh, I'll take it then because, you know, potentially sat on a few grand here, you know, with it being an old painting. So I uh, I wrapped it up and I went round to the auction house without it, just to say, I've got this Tudor painting and would you like to see it? And their, their eyes lit up, so, oh yeah, we'll, we'll get our art specialist to come in if you meet them tomorrow at 10 o'clock. So I'll grab my painting, um, wrapped up again by then and marched it down to the auction house to be uh, um, valued and everything. And, um, you know, unwrapped it. Now, you know, you, you think, oh, this is, you know, an ultra winner. You know, you, you, you ex I was expecting the, the art valuer. I was expecting his mouth to drop open when he saw it. But he went, just looked straight away, he said, 30 quid. So I was absolutely bloody gutted 30 quid um he, he looked at it and said no it's um it's more like a hundred years old you know it's a fake hasn't got a signature on it there's no backstory blah de blah de blah it's poor quality oh, a waste of bloody time again so um yeah auctioned it off yeah and got 30 quid but never mind Oh, imagine if it was a Hans Holbein or somebody like that. I'd be, uh, I would be sat here, I'd be sat on a yacht somewhere. Right, not a bad sky. The sky, skies go. I might just add a bit more blue up there. I've seen Hans Holbein's work and oh, just to die for, it's stunning. Like it was painted yesterday. I saw, well, one place I saw it was in uh, the National Gallery in London. And the amazing thing about London, all the galleries are free, every single one of them. And it's just, if you're ever in London, go to it. getting there, a bit more of that blue colour in this corner, excuse my arm in the way, stormy sky, right let's have a think, do something down here, I might um, just grab a bit of Indian yellow and give my brush a quick wipe again, and put a bit of titanium white in the Indian yellow, I'll get some more titanium white out my tube, there we go. But yeah, I'd, I'd love to find a masterpiece in an attic somewhere. I haven't got an attic, but um, you know, it's all right to dream, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Bit of Indian yellow. Just there, I think. Some nice uh, titanium white mixed in. Uh -huh. A bit more of that grey just down here, just darken things off a little. Dee, dee, dee. It's quite storming. Ominous, we than talk about the Orkneys. Oh, it might be the mood, I mean, I, don't, I feel fine, but you know, they often say that whatever mood you're in, it just imprints itself on your paintings. Bob Ross said, you know, when his, uh, when his wife died, um, he was devastated, it destroyed him. But he said, uh, your paintings do tend to get darker. 
if you're not in a very good place. But as I say, I feel a little high, but I don't know. Right. Give me brush a wipe again. So that speck out there, there we are. Uh, what do I need? If I get some uh, ultramarine blue, just to put a bit of distance on. Well, the illusion of distance. It's fooling the eye into thinking there's something going on over there. Grab a bit more titanium white as well, just along there. Not looking too bad, it's not my best, but it's a painting. And you can't beat it, particularly after a day at work. I'm, I'm quite unkempt at the minute, I'm, I'm normally clean shaven with work, but uh, I spent the past couple of days. Um, on other duties which don't involve me shaving and looking smart so I've just let myself go a little bit what I do need is a haircut I will eventually not bad I'm looking at the paintings I go like that I kind of look at different angles hence me doing all this business Right, I might, uh, I wonder if I just get a little bit of yellow to make it pop a little bit. Bit of uh, chrome yellow hue. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, I'll put the cap back on. Oh, it's not easy with gloves. Oh, come on, John, for God's sake. Oh, bear with me. I'm trying to put the cap on this bloody paint. It doesn't help that I've got shaky hands. Yeah. I don't want to just leave it because I'll forget about it. It'll dry the tube out. Anyway, there we are. Get some, uh, get some of this yellow. Just plonk a bit there. Just to give it some interest and pizzazz. A little bit there as well. Just a fraction. There we go. Not going mad. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> hmm. Right, what else do we need? I think we're there, just about, you know. Um, we'll grab my flat brush again, I wonder. If I just... Plonk a bit of something there. And something there as well. Trees or rocks. Yeah, it's quite stormy. I quite like that. It's not bad. It'll do for me. Short and sweet. Yeah, I think we're there. Just perhaps a bit more grey bits. Just go over it in my hands just to smooth it over a little. And we're there. So, yeah, thank you so much for watching. It does mean a heck of a lot. Yeah, it'll do. As I say, it's not amazing. It's not my best, but it's a painting, which is the important thing. So thank you so much for watching. It does mean a heck of a lot. And uh, don't forget, I'm also, as well as on YouTube, I'm on Instagram, um, Facebook, and johnkid.co.uk. So, yeah, don't forget to subscribe and all that business. 
And yeah, we're done. And hit the bell thing if you want to get notificationated. So job is a good one. And thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.